Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Moxie Creek Mushrooms, and today I want to talk to you guys about how we make grain spawn here. It's a very straightforward and simple process, but it will save you tons of money on your operations. And real quick guys, I just wanted to take a moment to remind you all to please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, that really helps me out. Check out our Patreon, we have that, we've got some really cool tiers. Uh, and rewards that people get for supporting us at different levels. Uh, that is easily the best way to support us. It really helps us out and helps us produce great quality content on how to produce mushrooms at your business or home. Also, please check out our website. You can buy our spawn on the website. Uh, we have some really good stuff. We do have a little bit of a backlog. Uh, culture plates are flying off the shelf, so please check those out. We've got a lot of great varieties of mushrooms that you can't get anywhere else. And uh, with that, y'all, I was about to say keep spawning culture. Uh, the best thing to do is typically just to buy a bag of spawn, whether that be from us or another supplier like North Spore or anyone else. And you take that, and the simplest explanation is it's kind of like potato farming, where you take a potato and you cut it into pieces, plant it in the ground, and they grow up each as a different potato plant. Each one of those kernels has the potential to turn into a completely separate bag of mushrooms. You don't really want to go that low though on your spawning rates. What we do is we'll start off with grain from the farmer's co-op. You can use millet, oats, any kind of whole grain that you want. We prefer oats because they are high in nitrogen and high in protein. Protein is, or nitrogen is a protein bound molecule. So anything with a higher protein content is gonna have higher nitrogen. That's why we like oats, plus they're tough and they don't bust when they're in the pressure cooker, which a lot of people have problems with when it comes to millet. So we can really use and abuse these fillers. Secondly, <clears throat> after you go to the farmer's co-op and get your whole grain, you're gonna to want to bring that home and soak it. We place it in a five gallon bucket, uh, about three quarters full of grain, and then cover that with water but we soak it for 24 hours. Or sometimes when it's really warm, it'll start bubbling when it starts fermenting. That's when we know that it's ready. That's whenever it starts to, uh, to ferment, the yeast starts to grow. Um, a lot of people add yeast, uh, baker's yeast to their grain. We don't do that, we just let it grow naturally. It softens the grains up a little bit. Each one hydrates to a really good consistency. Uh, after that, we take our grain, <coughs> excuse me, that has been soaked Pour that into our sink. Make sure you put a sink strainer in the bottom. I have not done that before and it goes really terribly for you. After you're finished draining your grain spawn, you're simply gonna wanna rinse it down with hot water. That helps it dry off a little bit faster. It's not necessary that it be perfectly dry, but you kinda want your kernels to, to crumble away easily, not stick together. After that, we'll take our trowel, scoop, whatever you're using, hands, bare paws, I don't care. Once you take that, start pouring your grain in. You can weigh this out or you don't have to weigh it at all. We weigh it out because we want to make sure that when you guys order five pound bags, you get five pound bags. If you're just using it for yourself, you don't really have to weigh it. You can kind of eyeball it and guess it. That's what I used to do. Um, once it's bagged, we just simply fold the gussets up really nice and crisp, tuck them under the bag, and then they can be loaded into your pressure cooker. When you load into your pressure cooker, I'll take my bags, turn them upside down for the first layer. That way that that flap does not have anything uh, level with the water. That way your water is not gonna have any sort of entryway into your bags. You can then place the other bags right side up, all into the pressure cooker, stacked like that. I usually can get two layers, six bags into each pressure cooker, um, close that up, heat it up to 15 PSI. Once it is at temperature and pressure, you then cook it. We cook ours for two and a half hours. That is just because I like to make sure that it is absolutely sterile, that it has had tons of time to get clean, and the oats don't burst even at two and a half hours of cook time. <clears throat> After that, we let the bags cool overnight. Once they've cooled overnight, they come down to the lab crew, and the lab crew takes those and they inoculate them shake the bags up to make sure that the grain is spread evenly throughout the bag and then they shelve it here after you have shaken your spawn bags and place them on your shelf just let them grow in usually it takes about a week or so for them to, to grow in uh, it means that the block the bag the grains get covered completely in mycelium they turn white 
Once they're there, you want to use them like you would normally. When you order spawn in from somebody else, then that is why you want to bust it up and just add it to your, your blocks. You can expand it further into grain spawn. How far you can get away with that is dependent on the quality of the spawn that you purchased and the quality of the spawn you are producing. So if you don't have as good of a clean technique as uh, some of these giant places that have you know, better equipment or better uh, techniques, then you might not be, you might be able to get away with three or four generations. Uh, or you might want to only trust yourself that far in the beginning. Still, with each bag of spawn being able to make up about 10 more bags of spawn, costing you just a few dollars in materials and only using your time, that could save you a significant chunk of income when it comes to making spawn. Or when it comes to your operation, mushroom operations. So with that guys, I just wanted to tell you our quick, simple, straightforward way of making spawn bags. Um, how you can take ours or someone like our, our spawn and save yourselves a little bit of money, expand that out and get a lot more mushrooms for every dollar you put in. And uh, with that y'all, remember, keep spawning culture.